Welcome to the F Word. Tonight, I have to win the dessert challenge. I'm going head to head with him, Hugh Furley Whittingstall. Unfortunately, there's a new judge in the house. I'm going to be firm, but fair. It's Christmas in the F Word restaurant, and my menu wouldn't be complete without Delia, Ainsley, Jamie, Anthony, Nigella, and Gary. I get banged up for Christmas. And the pressure's on for Russell and Miller. By the end of tonight, one of these two will be coming to work for me. If I had to make the decision on those last two tables there, Russell, you'd be going home. On order, four covers, table ten. Four oyster soup, main course, four turkey, yes? One no breadcrumbs. Watch that table, yes? Russell and Miller are the two commies in the kitchen this evening. By the end of tonight, one is going to win a job in one of my restaurants, and the other one's going home. Yes, sorry, Gordon. Fuck, you're nearly going home. Watch the tickets, please, Russell. I'm trying to run a fucking hot plate here, and you're knocking them all over the place. Yeah, come on. Yeah, you're like a baby fucking rhinoceros. Come on. Russell, move your ass. Table six, yes? Four oyster soup, yeah? Yes, chef. Try and serve it before fucking midnight. Now, tonight's starter is oysters in champagne with a cucumber pappardelle. Don't turn your nose up at oysters. They are delicious and a real gourmet treat. If you don't like raw oysters, try cooking them because they taste amazing and can be enjoyed by the most squeamish guests. Now, first of all, got to open the oysters. Don't be scared of doing this because it's actually quite straightforward. All you have to do is get the knife and pierce inside the muscle. Not at the side, not at the end, because that's where the shell's really brittle. And just push down on top of the oyster until you get through and then just twist and the shell just pops off. Open up. Just cut through the muscle. And out into the bowl. These are rock oysters and they're from Devon. And they're one of the tastiest you can get this time of year. Right, cucumber, not too much cucumber, yes? All we do is get the peeler, place the cucumber down and peel. These really nice strips of cucumber. And they not only look fantastic, but it means they actually sort of look identical to Papadelli pasta, and they take seconds to cook. Bring to the boil a couple of ladles of vegetable stock. Add the cucumber, oyster juice, and the cream. Bring back to the boil and add your oysters. You've really got to move your ass because the oysters overcook within seconds, so you've really got to be quick and 30 seconds off the heat. Next, add a pinch of salt and a sprinkling of fresh chives. And then, we're going to finish the soup with champagne. The only thing that's missing now, the touch of lettuce. And that literally goes in seconds before you serve it. Take your cucumber. And that is a fantastically light, tasty, sumptuous, beautiful soup that's been finished with champagne and lettuce. Service, please. please. Table seven, uh, Jean-Baptiste. Ali, yes. go. Use a ladle, please. We're going to be here all night, Sir Russell. I said a ladle. I can't keep on telling you again, yes? There's no lettuce in there. Oh, come on. Excuse me. Get me the soup back from the table. Gordon is very happy with soup. Sorry? Hurry up, Jean-Baptiste, Yeah, apparently not. Please. Yeah, come here. do you find it's funny? You're laughing away. No, no, no. I want the fucking <laughs> soup back. Just get the fucking bowl from the table. Let's go, two more pans. What happened there, Miller? Half the table had lettuce, the other table didn't. Get a pan, please. Back up to the boil. Yes. Quickly. And if the oysters are overcooked, Miller, start again. Hurry up. Hello, Hello, ladies. Hello. No, you've got the best table in the house. Three oh. ladies all to yourself. I'm a lucky man. Huh? <laughs> Do you enjoy your oysters? It was very good. First time as well. Oh, really? Anything yeah. happening downstairs? Not quite yet. I'll Not leave quite yet. Just <laughs> almighty. Should have happened half an hour ago. I hate any help, Dad. Huh? Dear, oh dear. <laughs> How are you, darling? Mm -hmm. Good to see you. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas welcome, to welcome, you. Welcome, welcome. Now, 
Christmas? Yes. In the Osborne household? Yes. That must be mad, no? It's really, you know, hustle, <laughs> bustle, hectic, dogs, kids, yeah. the whole lot. And I can imagine Ozzy biting the head off a turkey before it goes in the oven, no? He ends up cooking it. I, he does. He ends up cooking because I can't. I can't believe that he does the fucking cooking in your house. <laughs> What's he like? <laughs> I mean, what kind of things does he cook? Good old English thick chips he Seriously. does and they're brilliant. Really? Do you get excited about going out to dinner? With good food I do. Mm. I really, I, you know, there's such a difference between good food and mm -hmm. food. Yeah. Now, it's been well documented, your relationship with food. Bulimia, for instance. It's a thing of when we all need to eat, and I would need to eat, but I would hate the fact that I needed to eat, so I'd right. want to get rid of it. Yeah. And then I, I just wouldn't feel clean. I had yeah. to just get it out of my body, because it was crap that I was eating. I mean, that's all under control now. That's been... Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. Extraordinary. The fact that you look amazing. How do you keep it up? And what was the last thing you had done? Oh, Make... cosmetic? Yes. My boobs. Your boobs? Yeah, but... I don't like them now, they're too big, so I'm going to have them changed. Does Ozzy think they're too big? No, he likes them. But they're amazing, you don't need to change them, he likes Sharon. Them. No, they're too big. They weigh a lot, honestly, Seriously. they do. They weigh a lot, Seriously. and it's like, nah. Really? Yeah. Have you ever had oysters before? I haven't, because I think they look like bogeys, big but... bogeys. Um, or... Jean-Baptiste, s'il vous plaît. Oh, did you hear that, that accent? No. I, I don't think you're going to chew. Sharon being Sharon, you're going to swallow. <laughs> Ready, babe? <laughs> Just have a little smell. Mm -hmm. Smells like an old fanny. This is a high-quality oyster. You're going to absolutely <laughs> love it. I can't believe you just said that about my oyster. <laughs> there you go. I'll take this big one. Ready? So, go up, on, tilt on. down, finger. Go on. Mm. All right, let's smell your breath now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and the low fat on. as well. <laughs> this one, that's a little bit smaller, this one. You're okay. <laughs> Maybe Oyster. turn around the other way, because that, oh, that, see, that's okay. it's like a, a, a pearl. That there's to sort of fit onto your mouth. Okay. Can't wait. It feels like it's One, testicle. Two. Oh. <laughs> All right. Go on, babe, straight down. Well done. <laughs> and swallow. <laughs> no, no. What was that like? It's like it being in be Brighton and taking a mouthful of sea water. Damn, you didn't like that, no? Oh. That's supposed to be an aphrodisiac. He's Aussie in for a good night. Not with this breath, he's not. <laughs> It'll murder him. Next on the menu, the kids get to eat Anthony. And if things go wrong, I'll be stuck with a family of vegetarians. Bye, Bye Anthony. Bye. Watch out. Go. I'm off to Harrogate in North Yorkshire to get a vicar's wife back in the kitchen. The freezer is central to my cooking. Give us this day our daily bread. And I leave the commies in charge of the kitchen, so it could be me that ends up stuffed. Is it fuck warm? No, no. No, so do you want to serve that? No, chef. No, get the sprouts off and get them in the fucking pan. Let's go. Yeah. Russell, you're sending table 16. 16. Millie, you're sending table 3. Table 3. Welcome back to the F Word. Now, next up, the main course. Homegrown roasted turkey. Turkey. The one-hit wonder. Um, absolutely amazing bird. Stuff. Onion. Orange. Garlic. Thyme and bay leaf. Season. Truffle butter. This little beauty helps to take the turkey to a different division. These cost 50 quid for that size. Yes, it's expensive, but boy, is it worth it. Don't chop the truffle too small because we want to taste and identify the truffle. Parsley. Tarragon. Salt, touch of pepper, tablespoon of olive oil, and that stops the butter from burning. Take your piping bag and fill it. Separate skin from meat. Piping bag in. Pipe butter. Massage. Salt, pepper. Olive oil. Roast. Citrus breadcrumbs. Pancetta. Onion. Thyme. You don't need to try a good old chef's trick and pull down and just peel it off its lovely flowers. Pine nuts. Butter. 
bread, orange, lemon. And to start browning, sprinkle your orange and lemon breadcrumbs. Lemon juice. There we go. Beautiful. Rest. Tin foil keeps it nice and warm and it cools down slowly, so the breasts become really nice and moist. Calm. What you can smell, of course, is that amazing truffle. Absolutely beautiful. Turkey with truffle butter and citrus breadcrumbs, done. Now, let me show you something quick. Come here. Anthony, Nigella and Dina are all in the oven. Have a quick look. Don't touch. There you go. That's Anthony in there. For the past three months, my kids Megan, Holly, Jack and Matilda have been rearing their own turkeys for Christmas. Tonight, they'll finally get to eat them. Wave goodbye, Anthony. Quick, you're in Bye, there. You're... Anthony. Bye, Bye, Anthony. Anthony. Bye. Anthony. Bye. Watch out. Yeah. Go. Right. At the table. Up. At the oh, table. It's scary. Oh, I want to see it. He's gone. He's going in the oven. Come on. At the oh, table. Man. Matilda. Hup. Dear, oh, dear. Up. Okay, now. Now, four minutes on the hot plate, yes? So uh, move your ass, yeah? A little bit of energy, yes? Yeah. In fact, lots of energy, yes? And yes, it is a race, Miller. Let's go down. Now, with the turkey, we're serving roast potatoes, carrots, and Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts always get a hard time, and we only get to eat them once a year. However, do not put a cross at the bottom like my mum does. When you crisscross the bottom of that, you end up with a soggy, overcooked sprout. Leave them whole. Into the boiling water and cook for three and a half to four minutes. Then take them out and dump them straight in ice water so it stops them from ever cooking. Then we're going to soak them very, very quickly with some almonds. So the sprouts just start to colour and the almonds just start going that really nice nut brown flavour. Now, the roast potatoes that are going with the turkey are charlottes. They're small, rich and very waxy, so you don't need to part ball them before you roast them. And this way, the flavour is extraordinary. Into the pan, season and colour on the stove in goose or duck fat. And if you give the potatoes colour before they go in the oven, you get this really nice, crispy flavour around the outside. Come on, come on, come on. Really important. Now the fingers are moving fast, yes? Come here, you. Don't serve it. Are you happy with that? Yeah, reasonable. You are, yes? Yeah. Haven't even tested it to see if it's warm. Yeah. It's still warm because this bit's warm as well, Chef. Yeah. Touch that there. Come on, Russell. Yeah, that's not quite warm. Is it fuck warm? No, no it's not. No, so do you want to serve that? No, Chef. No, get the sprouts off and get them in the fucking pan. Let's go. Yep. So delicious turkey, nice hot potatoes, yeah, roasted carrots and fucking stone cold Brussels sprouts. Come on. Right, Russell, come here. Miller, come here. That wasn't good enough. No, chef. A little bit all over the shop, you know that. You, stone-cold vegetables, your turkey, Carvin, is shocking. How can you call that carved? It's like you've been in there with a fucking shovel. If I had to make the decision on those last two tables there, Russell, you'd be going home. Pull it back. Yes, chef. One table of five each. Let's go again. How about getting the turkey sliced on the tray this time? Yeah. Getting your vegetables piping hot. Yeah. And plating your turkey and your veg at the same time. Yes, chef. Yes? Here we go. Make it count. Move your ass, yes? Clean your fucking plates, come on. Nice portions, piping hot veg. Let's go. Good. Well done, big boy, yes? Yeah. You saved your skin there, big boy. Go, table 12. Nice. Go, please. Come on, Miller. Yes, go. Twelve, please. Go. Right, I'm going to nip in there. How was Nigella? Breast moist? I have to say, you, you've pulled off the hardest thing in turkey cooking. Really? Which is 
moist breast. <laughs> With, I'm a turkey sceptic. I know you are. You're a plucking, fucking, finicky turkey grower. Uh, yes, and, I, and I'm fussy about turkey. Yes. And very, very rarely is it cooked properly. Yes. And that's really hard to pull off. So, Coming from you, Hugh, I'm honoured. Thank you. No, it was really, really good. How do you feel about Nigella being a man? Uh, uh, confused. <laughs> Nigella, a man cared for by Jack, age five. I mean, as a provenance. I mean, I like menus where they talk about the provenance of the yes. meat, you know. Traceability. Yeah, traceability. <laughs> now, I'll see you later for dessert, yes? I'll see you for the pudding challenge. Yes. How are you feeling about that? I'm slightly nervous. <laughs> huh? Good to see you. The turkey is lovely and moist. There's a lot of lemon in it. Sometimes I'm not sure about lemon, you know, so much lemon, but I did enjoy it, and I thought that the actual texture of the meat is lovely. And the sprouts are just the kind of el dente that I struggle to get. She said, you're a little dog, hey. Good to see you. Oh, what have you noticed different about your sprouts and my sprouts? Actually, yeah, I did not cook no, Excuse me, excuse me, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Oh, steady, don't you start ganging up on me. <laughs> there was no crisscrosses on my sprouts. No, there wasn't. No, that's why they weren't what cooked. So they weren't <laughs> soggy, Mum. Yeah, we no, served them whole for once. No, they were hard. They were you hard. don't remember every time Mum served Brussels sprouts? She yeah. served them by the leaves. <laughs> see you shortly, yes? <laughs> Given it's Christmas, I thought I'd get a vicar's wife back in the kitchen. And believe me, she needed a miracle. Christmas, f for a vicarage family, I would say it's wall-to-wall -wall church. Mark does all the cooking except at Christmas, when it does fall to me. I don't think I've ever really learnt to cook. Give us this day our daily bread. The freezer is central to my cooking. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. An alternative Christmas lunch would be, would be interesting. Amen. The ideal Christmas meal for me would be something that could be prepared in advance, that was easily cooked and served, but that also was exciting and that I had done for myself and I would really love to see the family's face when I put that down. Hello, Ruth. Hi, Gordon. How are you? All right, how are you? I feel like Santa Claus. Great. Very now, glad to see you. Um, Christmas. Yeah. What's the problem? On Christmas morning, I'm up really early trying to um, prepare vegetables or whatever can be done in advance, mm -hmm. which is when I get really stressed. My solution to this, of course, it would be something simple and uh, something like a salmon on crude. Right. You can get prepped. Yes. Go off yeah. to church. Mm -hmm. Return, cook in the oven. Yeah. Whilst that's cooking in the oven, then you get the vegetables on. That will be done oh. within the time of the salmon being cooked. Fantastic. First and foremost important, get the salmon done. So it's just going to be um, layers of salmon yeah. sandwiched together. Yeah. Between the fillets, there'll be some butter, sultana, some ginger, right. some lemon and thyme. And the nice thing about this particular dish is quite, uh, yeah, it's quite festive. Mm. There's the salmon. It's been skinned, pin bone. Get the butter. Paste this all over the salmon. We get the head and the tail. Yeah. Opposite one another. Right. So we lift up the salmon, place that on there. Any particular reason for that? Or? It's just so it cooks evenly. This is short crust, yeah? Roll the pastry out, get the salmon onto the pastry. We're going to use an egg wash to stick this together. I want you to brush around the whole rim. Nice. And lift over. On your tray. That goes in the fridge. Excellent. Imagine it's Christmas morning. Someone's done? Yeah. Big weight off your shoulders. You're back from the church. What's next? Check the oven temperature. Yep. Whack it up. And then get the salmon. Yeah, straight in. And we're going to do like a cream leek. Ooh, look Looks fantastic on the table. Yeah. Tastes amazing. And we're going to season with a little bit of curry powder. Right. Don't worry, a little bit of wash on there, please. <laughs> we don't want any dirty leeks on Christmas Day, do we? <laughs> no. That'll spread like wildfire around here, yes? <laughs> the vicar's wife's got dirty leeks. <laughs> so leeks into the pan. Nice. And lightly seasoned with curry powder. Yeah? Oh, delicious. Cream in the leeks. Right. Job done. Take it out. Beautiful. Nice. Slowly. It feels really meaty. That slice is beautiful. I want you to put the potatoes on. Right. Wow. Main ingredient on the left-hand side of the plate. Look at that. Cream leeks. There we go. Right. Now, my dear vicar's wife. Yes? You're a star. Ha you're the star. <laughs> mm. Happy Christmas. Wow! Wow! <laughs> mm. Wow! How do you? Oh, yeah. Can we have this? Okay. Leaks look gorgeous as well. <laughs> Massive improvement. That is superb. Now, how was that? Really good. It's very nice. Yes? Yeah. And Ruth, not too stressed out? Very chilled. Fantastic. I've never said this to the vicar before, but get out the kitchen, yes? 
and stay in the church <laughs> where you belong. <laughs> uh, New Year's resolution. Get back in the kitchen. Absolutely. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Bye. Merry Christmas. Bye bye. bye. Hello, Ruth. Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Nice to see you. Martin, how are you? Hi, good. You well? Yeah, fine, thank you. Are you feeling less scared now about cooking? Are you... I've done a bit. You've done a bit? I've done a bit. Fantastic. I yes. tried the pastry again and it didn't stick to the pin. Oh, really? Plenty of flour. That's great news. Fantastic, well done. Nice to see you. Take care, Christmas. Mm, well, Merry bye. Christmas. Bye. Good to see you. Thank you. How's the turkey? It's really nice. Yes? It's very nice. Um, as you know, it's been my objective to get women back in the kitchen and it's gone very well. Thousands of requests, not just from desperate housewives, but some from men as well. And one that really sort of, I suppose, touched my heart was this man. Sharon happens to be, in my opinion, the worst cook on the face of the earth. She couldn't even make a piece of toast without burning it. Gordon, would you do me a big favour? I'm fed up of having takeaway food delivered to my house. Teach you to cook, um, what would I really like? Lamb chops and mint sauce. He likes lamb chops. Thank you very much. Teacher, please, please, I'm starving. Oh, when did you do Let, that? that? It was his plea. It was his message to me to get... How cute is he? Listen, that's one man I definitely don't want to upset. Come on, Mrs Osborne. Good to have you I'm, in the kitchen. I can do this. Right. I know I can. Now, these are very simple lamb chops. Pan onto the stove. This olive oil. Touch of olive oil. That's right. If I start it off with butter, it'll burn too quickly, so it goes black. So, a little bit in. Nice hot pan. Rumours has it, OK, that you didn't even realise, A, how to work the oven, and B, what it was in your kitchen for. Is that true? You weren't that bad. No, my oven has always had the instructions how to work it still inside, taped to the side of the oven, cos I never turn it on. No, it was my husband's hiding place for his booze, cos he knew I'd never open it. Unbelievable. That's and where he weed. used to have his everything. And, everything and his was rosemary. In the oven. Oh, Special yes. rosemary, Moroccan black. Yes. Right, I want you to turn them now. They're ready for turning. There's one thing on there like that and turn it over. Now be careful you don't don't don't, don't smash yourself. Now, my kids are constantly banging on about me, even at the age of seven, six and five, that I'm embarrassed them every time I go out. Do your kids ever get embarrassed about some of the things that you say and do? Please, my kids have been so I mean, come on, look at their mum. I know, and I know. Come I know. on. Can you imagine the old man and me turning up at parents' night at school? I would I love... I mean, my kids went through hell and back with us. I mean, their dad turning up in black velvet and all his jewellery for school meetings. Ozzy went to parents' day. Yeah. And sports day. Yeah, he used to fall asleep at parents' meetings. He'd Serious. be there snoring, yeah, Serious. honestly. But no matter what, this is the yeah. one thing, no matter what you look like, what you do, every kid is still embarrassed. Really? So you might as well be something yeah. to be embarrassed about. Yeah. Um, I'm going to make a little doggy bag now and take these back. Mm -hmm. The best thing to do is keep them wrapped in the tin foil. OK, put a little yes. knob of butter in there. Yes. And into the oven. Present. And what would be best to serve with that? With that, you know what? A nice mashed potato. You know how to make a mashed potato? Yeah, you get powder and you pour boiling water in it. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> I better come round Christmas Day, you know that. Uh, I'll have some help. So oh, I'll see you in a minute, yes? Next on the menu is dessert time. Hugh Furley Whittingstall takes me on with his chocolate chestnut truffle cake. Suddenly, all your confidence is just sapping away. <laughs> and Sharon Osborne is doing the judging. One of them I really love, and the other one I do not like. And Giles Corrin finds out why we should eat Christmas dinner every day. They're less likely to uh, become addicted to alcohol, cigarettes, drugs... Yeah, so sitting there in front of the TV, eating their TV dinners, basically, they're turning themselves into the crackheads of tomorrow. This table's for my wife, yes, and children. Let's go. One table, I do not want to fuck up. Come on, let's go. Go, go. Up. Wakey, wakey. Sit down, Russell. Yeah. How are you, Meg? Fine. Good. Holly, what do you think? Good. Good, yes. Megan? Nice. Mmm. Jack, what do you think? Good. And you like the brown Delicious. meat as well? Yeah. Matilda, what do you think of Anthony? Nice? Does he taste the way you thought he was going to taste? Oh, uh, no. I oh. just need to have baby chips. So you want to have turkeys back in the garden again? Psst, what about pigs in the garden? Yeah. Pig, let the 
Little, little pigs. Little... Uh, what do you think about Matilda's idea with chickens? Pigs is probably more encouraging. You're happy with the pigs? Yes! yes! Mummy said yes to the pigs. That's fantastic news. I've got to get back to the kitchen. My teacher. Give me a kiss. Yes, we'll take some for your teacher. Give me a kiss. Mm. Where are you going? See you later. I'm going back to work. <laughs> back in the kitchen. Right, listen, clean plates, yes. Okay. Or no dessert. What's yes? For dessert? Hopefully, chocolate tart. See you later. Chocolate ice cream. Now, this man, Hugh Foley Whittingstall, is going to attempt to beat me with his chocolate chestnut cake. No chance. You reckon? Um, what are you doing exactly? I'm going to do a, a, a nice gooey chocolate and chestnut cake. Nice. It should be quite soft and moussey in the middle. Okay. It's one of the things you could, act, you could literally eat it straight out of the oven as a, as a kind of hot chocolate pudding. Yeah, good. And it'll, you won't even manage to slice it, you just have to scoop it out. Oh, nice. Good luck. Good luck. So I'm doing a very simple, straightforward chocolate tart. No frills, no spills, no creme fraiche, no vanilla chocolate tart with roasted hazelnuts. Um, we're going to make uh, the most amazing pastry. Um, roll it out, line it in this um, flan ring, put the cream and the milk on to boil, add that to my little chocolate buttons. There's a very well-known Elizabeth David chocolate cake that uses ground almonds instead of flour and keeps it lovely and moist and quite fudgy in the middle. This is really based on that, except I'm just using chestnuts cooked in a little cream and milk, mashed instead of the ground almonds. But really, it's a tribute to, to her recipe. But it's lovely at Christmas, because it's got the chestnuts in. Milk, cream, up to the bowl, hazelnut praline on top of the chocolate buttons, and then, quite simply, cream and milk onto the chocolate and stir away. Now, the thickening agent of this particular tart are whole eggs. And what the egg does is, as the cream and the chocolate and the milk cook, of course, the eggs help to set it. Lightly whisk up the eggs and fold that in to the chocolate. Now, I'm just going to lightly toast my nuts. Now, Hugh, you're highly competitive, aren't you? Even though you're living in the countryside, you still have that chef's competitive streak in you, don't you? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I like to win, Gordon. Whoa. No, it's all right. You thought it had all gone horribly wrong for me there, didn't you? I was hoping it had, you know that, Hugh. Yeah. I'd get fired from your kitchen so far. <laughs> now, look at my part, look at that. Look at <laughs> Oh, my God. Does that actually bring you out in a sweat? I'd be getting clipped round the head if this was... What? I probably am about to be clipped what? by the head. Weren't you fired from the River Cafe for being a messy puppy? Yes. yes. In a word, yes. Flipping the heck. There we go. We're baking the tart blind. That means we're going to line this ring with a pastry and then bake that off first. So that's an added insurance policy that, A, the pastry stays nice and crisp, and, B, all we have to do then is just cook the chocolate filling. So baking blind simply means cooking it twice. You miss not being a professional chef running a restaurant full-time. Um, I don't miss it at all, cos I, no? I was quite a bad professional chef. Really? I just, you know, I have A bit like Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got the discipline. But what, what I do now, I, I enjoy very much. You know, it, yep. what we do in Dorset isn't really a restaurant. It's more informal than that. It's about telling people where the food comes from. I have a great kitchen team, but it's sort of more of a cookery school than a restaurant. Uh -huh. And um, uh, did you have long straggly hair at the River Cafe? I've always had long straggly hair. How many times a year do you wash it? I think I'm due for about once a month. Seasonal. Seasonal. Did you have to wear a hair nap? I could be due for my pre-Christmas wash any day now. You're distracting me and you're making me over-whip the egg whites. <laughs> the thing about folding in egg whites is never fold more than you need to, but you do have to get it properly incorporated, which means going deep to the bottom of the bowl and just lifting the mix, and that's it. And in it goes. And that just goes in there for 25 minutes. The really important not to overcook it so that you don't want it to dry out. So, out. Nuts, sprinkle the nuts at the bottom, chocolate in. It does look very good. We don't fill the tart right to the very top here. Two thirds of the way in, open the oven door, and then get the rest of your mixture and top up the tart. Uh, so that's so you don't have to carry a really full tart over exactly. to the oven. Exactly. So it gets really nice and full. Uh, that's obviously a very useful tip for chefs who've been drinking too much on Christmas Day. Absolutely. Oh, shit. <laughs> I dropped the cloth in it. I've already messed up my pudding. Are you OK? 
Yeah, I just went in to have a little look and I dropped the cloth. You see, that's why I got fired. Things like that. I dropped the cloth in the middle of my cake. I hope that's a clean one. Now it's all down to fucking Sharon Osbourne, you know that. And, you know, I've got, for the first time in the F-Word series, a proper chef in my kitchen. So well, if there's any time well, now that I really want to win, it's fucking today, Hugh. That's, that's very kind of you to describe me as a chef. I'm not a good loser, you know that. Huh? <laughs> well, you better be. I've got, I'm now in that state of mind where I actually really want to win. Serious? Yeah. Mine's in the oven now. It's got to go in there at 90 degrees for an hour and 10 to an hour and 15 minutes. So it cooks nice and slowly. We can't afford to turn it up any higher than 90, 95 degrees, otherwise it splits and separates. And I'm damned if I'm going to lose this challenge. For me, the best thing about Christmas, of course, the food. The worst thing about Christmas, the leftovers. Now, I've come to see a bunch of guys that just can't escape from that unwanted turkey. Doncaster Prison may not be renowned for its good food, but like many prisons, it runs a professionally recognised catering course to help rehabilitate inmates. This is our kitchen, Gordon. Again, with bars on there. Yes. Huh? Flippin' egg. This is a real hell's kitchen. Fucking hell. There are three and a half thousand meals a day going out of this kitchen. Three and a half thousand meals a day? Yes. I'm not too concerned about my dog tag. I'm just concerned the fact that I can get the fuck out of here in an hour's time, that's all. OK, turkey leftover curry. Hello, guys. I'll be cooking with Kirin, Baby, Daz and Jacko. I'm told they're the keenest cooks on X-Wing. Serious? Rumour has it. Uh, and you're supposed to be the sort of curry expert. Yeah. I won't say an expert. No, yeah. but you love a curry. I like a curry, yeah. Yeah. Curry is the most popular dish in the prison and it's also a great way to deal with leftover Christmas turkey. So I'm going to show the men of X-Wing how to make a Thai red curry. Uh, red chilies, OK, obviously. Uh, garlic, lemongrass and ginger. Um, have you used lemongrass before? No. No? Cut it in half, OK. Yeah, have a little smell. Lovely. That's really nice and fragrant. Have you, have you smelled that before? Yes, yes. Yes, have a smell of that. Lovely. Fresh lemongrass. Beautiful. Well, that'll do, just because it smells nice and sweet. Almost like vanilla. Really nice and lemony and fresh and fragrant. That lightens up the curry. So this is where we make the paste. And the way to mix it now is just get all the ingredients into a blender. We're doing it today with turkey, but, you know, this paste is great if you're making a, you know, a fish curry. Right, there's your onion. Yes, there's my onion. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's have a competition. You know how competitive chefs are, yes? Huh? Right, what do you reckon? We'll take him at the first uh, half, or do you reckon he will be finished before me? He's pretty good. He's pretty good. Right, knife down. The whole thing chopped and ready to go. Right. Dad? Set, go. Come on, Kieran. First half. Hold on a minute. <laughs> hey. Hey, fancy a job? <laughs> hey, I'm serious. Fancy a job? Yeah. Not 25 quid a week, big boy, 25 quid a day. Yeah. When you out? 2007. OK, 2007. Give me a call and come spend a day with me at the kitchen, OK? Yeah. To make the curry, we fry off the onions, add our curry paste, and then pour in coconut milk for a rich, creamy flavour. Nice. Then, as it cooks down, we add some monge too for colour and a bit of bite. What look all good, isn't it? Is that called yeah. monge too or snow peas? Snow. Snow peas, yeah. It gives a really nice sort of um, texture, it's slightly sweet as well. Now the turkey meat, and mix it through. Nice. Keep on mixing that in, my man. Back up the bowl. Um, now with the rice, we're going to make a, almost like a, um, a sticky rice. And we've got some cream coconut here. And the idea, of course, is to get the rice, cut up the coconut, and then just crumble that through there like this. Yeah. Then from there, sprinkle the coriander through there. And what it does, it makes a really nice, fragrant rice. OK, um, 30 minutes for the rice. Yeah. Whilst that's cooking, um, I'd love to go and look where you, uh, where you sleep in the cell. Excellent. Come on, fucking, that's small, huh? Yeah. Huh? Who snores the loudest? 
<laughs> Tom. Me. You. Yeah. Who farts the loudest? <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah. Do you mind if I lie down? That's mine. Yeah. That's yours? That's mine, yeah. God, fucking hell. God, it's fucking hard, no? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, that's all right. Don't you think? Yeah, it's quite firm, that, no? Yeah, that's all right, that. Let me just think. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just dim those lights down a little bit, please, Jackie? Um, how's the rice? Lovely. Hmm. Go oh, that's lovely. Good. Should we get over there? How are you, big boy? It smells lovely, that Yes. Yeah. Finished with fresh coriander. Thank you. Yeah? Good man. Huh? So what do you reckon, then, so far? Yeah, really yes? nice. Yes? Yeah, really nice. Mm. Right, enjoy that. Yeah, gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Merry Christmas, big man. Merry Christmas, Joe. Thanks for that. Not at all. Let me say, Merry Christmas, big man. Huh? Chill, God. Don't be late. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be late. Look at that. Suddenly, all your confidence is just sapping away. <laughs> You're absolutely fucking right. <laughs> That's ready. That's ready for Sharon. Now, look, it's not quite. Firm, but it, well, that's it, good, isn't it? You want it a bit gooey. A little bit gooey, that's right. Wee! Oh, that looks beautiful. It does look very, very nice. Homemade vanilla ice cream. Looks lovely. Mr. Whittingstall, it does look rather yummy, that. You know that. I'm slightly concerned that it looks too fucking good. However, it's yes. going to be close, isn't it? It's going to be very close. They look great. They both look good, don't they? Can I just. They do look fantastic. Can I just have a little sliver of yours? Yeah, of course. Do you mind? Just a little. All right, yeah. mm. please. All right, and have a little bit of this one. And the cream. Mm. It's very good. It's incredibly rich. Okay, Jean Baptiste, take them over to Sharon. Hope she likes them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And hey, listen, remember, if she doesn't, you're fucked. Yes. Get out of a I job. Know. I know that. Yeah. I'm fed up with fucking losing. Hello, Sharon. What How have I you? got? I'm fine. Here we go. So we have two desserts. Yes. So I need to try the first one. Mm, I love dessert. It's my favorite part of the meal. Mm, I love to. Me too. This is interesting. Mm -hmm. Have you made your mind on this one? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So this is dessert number two. Compared to the first one. Well, let's leave it like this. One of them I really love, and the other one I do not like. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. You've been working really hard. I've been having a lovely dinner. I know. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm in excited. a state of deep relaxation about this. Hi. Huh? How are you? Sorry, Sharon, Hugh. Very well. This is very tense. You know that. Why? Well, because. Well, I must say that I have heard that your desserts have not been going down great. No. Rumour has it on the street. Yes. Pressure's on. I am the chocolate queen. Are you? Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. 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 This is the one that's absolutely and completely fucking wonderful. <laughs> Jesus Christ! And what about this one with the hazelnuts? I would never eat that. <laughs> that is fucking brilliant. Sharon Osborne, I did love you. I do love you too. Oh my God! Mm, this is wonderful. Can I finish it? Please now, do. Too? Can I spoon feed you? Oh yes, darling. That was just fabulous. Mmm, huge. Yeah. Sharon. Yes, darling. May I? Yes, please. What else do uh -huh. you cook, Hugh? What do you like? Gordon, may what I? Do you like no, I'll do No, you must. Come on. Next on the menu, it's decision time. I give one of the commies the break of a lifetime, a job in my kitchens. The person that I'm going to offer a job to is... And Giles Corrin hears an amazing excuse for eating in front of the telly. <laughs> There's always the excuse, the dog always eats something. That's no good. You eat in front of the telly because the dog at the table. Welcome back to the F Word. Now, time to find out what our diners thought about the dessert. Did they agree with Sharon's stupid verdict? Let's go, Russell. 
light, moist, chocolatey, gooey yumminess. It's great. The cream that he made with his with the sultan was, was fantastic. Very tasty, but a little bit too sweet and a bit too rich. Christmas is hard work, but not for our professional eater, Giles Corrin. He wishes every day was Christmas Day. Oh, well, I wish it could be Christmas every day. At this shopping centre, it's been Christmas every day since the end of October. But what if it really worked? What if we had Christmas lunch every day of the year? Well, presumably, we'd all be fat, broke and miserable because Christmas dinner is famously fattening, expensive and stressful. But maybe we've got it all wrong. There's some convincing evidence around that if we ate Christmas lunch every day, we would in fact be happier, healthier and better off. The first excellent reason to have Christmas lunch every day is that it's a meal you prepare from scratch and not a ready meal. That means it's likely to be a lot better for you. Well, if you look at these labels, you see a list of additives and preservatives, and many of them are high in salt and fat. Mm -hmm. So you've got less control over what you're eating. Uh, so, so Christmas dinner is better for us than what people eat every day. Well, if you think about it, turkey breast without the skin is a great low-fat source of protein. You've got carrots, parsnips, Brussels sprouts, a great selection of vegetables, helping you to achieve your recommended five a day. Mm -hmm. But don't smother them in butter, nor salt. That's the key. Steamed vegetables lightly cooked. Then you've got your potatoes. Well, if you keep them large, keep the skin on. Explain. If you keep them large, they absorb less fat. So actually, you've got a lower fat potato just by keeping the potatoes large. So a big, floury, not too crunchy potato with its skin on. Is that the thing. sounds delicious. It certainly <laughs> does. Another potentially worrying thing about eating Christmas lunch every day is that it costs so much money. It is a big family occasion, and it is a big meal. So and you do you think it's more expensive than a normal meal? I would yes. say yes. I think you want to go a little bit extra at Christmas with the food, preparation, everything yes. else, yeah. But that's where you're wrong, because the second reason to have Christmas lunch every day is that it's actually a bargain. According to the Good Housekeeping Institute, your Christmas food shop actually costs 40% less than your normal food shop. You go to the um, supermarket and you buy all these ingredients and then when you take them home you can cook um, one big meal but then you have leftovers yeah. for everything else. This is the famous turkey curry that I've heard so much about. Exactly. And turkey sandwiches we... and turkey souffle well, and turkey we... creme brulee. That's right. Turkey soup. Turkey pasta, turkey rice, risotto, stir fries, sandwiches. Well, I think that's about enough turkey. The third reason we should have Christmas lunch every day is that it's a meal we eat at the table with our family, unlike the rest of the year. Where do you eat? Do you eat in front of the telly or...? Yeah, at the moment. Mostly. Someone, the dog at the table leaking. <laughs> <laughs> There's always the excuse, the dog always so eats something. It, That's no good. You eat in front of the telly because the dog at the table. They're not alone. A recent survey found that three-quarters of people eat dinner in front of the TV and one in five families only eat together once a week. So why does it matter then? Why, why, sh why should we all sit around together eating a, a freshly prepared meal instead of sitting in front of the TV? I don't see why. Well, if you're sitting down and you're eating and you're, and you're watching television, then you're not speaking to each other. And communication is actually the, the way that we form strong bonds in a family. Is there any proof? I mean, it sounds a nice idea. Is there Absolutely. any proof that it's true? I mean, there, there have been loads of surveys into this particular subject, but there was a really big survey into thousands of teenagers and their parents by the University of Columbia. And that stretched out over 10 years, and it found that it sort of improves children's um, skills communication-wise, their academic skills, they're less likely to uh, become addicted to alcohol, cigarettes, drugs. They're less likely to become addicted to drugs if they sit down to a square meal every night? Yeah, absolutely. So sitting there in front of the TV, eating their TV dinners, basically, they're turning themselves into the crackheads of tomorrow? Well, <laughs> I suppose you could say that. So there you have it. Eating Christmas lunch every day could make you happier, healthier and better off. And best of all, it might make your children less likely to end up on crack. Right, I've got a present for you. Yes, um, I've thought long and hard, um, spent a fortune on it and something that I've been dying to sort of give you. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas. Is it heavy? Yes. You <laughs> wanker. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to get you more noticed now, make you look a bit taller. Try them on. Hey. I've already got a pair. Uh, no, no. <laughs> because... <laughs> oh, no. Yeah! <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> give the audience a twirl. Give, them, give a little tell over there. Give us a <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> yes. Tonight, the F word commies have been fighting out for a job in my kitchen. How are you? Totally shit in it. Didn't think I did myself justice. Well, we all make mistakes, trust me. Uh, how are you? 
I, I really enjoyed being in the, in the kitchen. It was, um, yeah, it was the hardest it's been. It all began three months ago when I scoured the country to find new chefs with promise. Over a 1,000 applied, we shortlisted 12. Now, what in the fuck do we have here? Each week, two commies have gone head-to-head -head in the F-word kitchen. Now, two remain, but only one of them will get a job with me. Russell, he's creative, quietly confident, and he has flair. Good. Well done, big boy, yes. But sometimes, his judgment is off. Okay. Taste it. You tasted it? Yes, chef. Yeah, and? I think it's OK, chef. Has to ever cook. Stop. If I don't win, I would be absolutely gutted. Miller, she's a fast learner, confident, and she has an eye for detail. One minute, chef. They're nicely sourced. But the big question is, can she cope with pressure? Having got this far, I really want to win this. Miller, look at the pass. That's going in the bin. Where's your passion? There, there's a lot of passion. I hope you realise by now um, that I'm obsessed with all things food. People look at me and tell me I'm crazy. Why do you want to do this? I, because of the food, because I want to work with food, because I want to cook. So you're not really just posh totter. You really want to cook for a living? I really want to cook for a living. You really want I to cook really for a living? I really want to cook for a living. Yeah. Describe your day. Today I felt that I've done crap, to be honest. I just didn't perform. I felt... But you've got to be nothing. able to take the pressure. And when the shit hits the fan, it hits the fan. Yeah. And my reputation's at stake as well. If you can't handle this this evening, and you made so many fuck-ups, what's it going to be like when you're in a real serious kitchen? Well, that's why I want to have that opportunity to try and get myself up to scratch. Mm -hmm. I feel that you're a person that can actually iron me out. Anyway, my conclusion to you both is you've come a long way. I have to base my decision on individuals that can absorb more, be pushed more, and ones that can become stronger under more pressure. And the person that I'm going to offer a job to is Camilla. Well done. Thank you. And well done to you. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. And well done to you. Yeah. Yes? Don't give up. Yeah. Keep cooking. Stay yeah. focused. Yes? Yeah. And push yourself. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Well done. Oh, well, well done, you bad girl. Thanks for watching the F Word. Hope you enjoyed your meal. Please, please keep cooking. You've got to eat, so you may as well eat well. Happy plucking Christmas. As a chef, oh, oh, oh. welcome back. Fucking hell. Oh, that fatty. God almighty. Oh, oh. my ass hurts. Welcome back to the F Word, the food show that puts your mouth fuck off. That's shit. Fucking bullshit. Oh, bollocks, bollocks. This is a health hazard! This is all about fucking bullshit. Sorry. Oh, bollocks. Flipping heck. Fuck it. Shit. Fuck that shit. I'm going a little bit fucking loop the loop. Thank you for watching, bollocks. Welcome to the F Word. I've got a new restaurant. But all the dishes on the menu are still things that everyone can cook at home. To prove it, I've thrown all the professional cooks out of the kitchen and replaced them with passionate amateurs. That's all I want you to do right now, big boy. Yeah? It's fucking wakey wakey a little bit, yes? Take the oil off the stove quickly. Oh, fuck me. What are you doing? Each week is a different brigade and they better be bloody good because we've got 50 paying customers. The last three tables have been perfect. That shit. So if they don't like it, they don't pay. It's as simple as that. No, and then what do you think of me if I let you send that? You're gonna think I'm a right fucking arsehole. Also this series, I'm searching out the very best of Bridges' ingredients. Oh, yeah. oh. Hello. Now you are a very luscious bacon sandwich. Look at you. Oh. The Good evening. Welcome. Have any of you ever actually spent a day in a proper restaurant? No. 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 no, no never. 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 Fuck never. me. Please oh, yeah. do not fucking let me down. Yeah?
Yeah. Let's get cooking. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Thank you. Up. Uh, how is everybody? So far, so good? So far, so yeah. good. Is the wine flowing? Yes, starting. Yes. Just starting. Okay. On order, four covers, table three. Four salad of red mullet, four saddle of lamb, four summer pudding. Yes, yes chef. chef. Thank yes, chef. you. Nigel, four salad away, table three. How long? Uh, Give me a time. Seven minutes, chef. Yeah. The start is a simple salad of red mullet. The brigade's been shown how to make it, but to ensure they know what they're doing, I'm going to run through it one more time. Now watch. Hot pan. Potatoes are colouring nicely. Yeah. Yeah. Seasoning on the fish. Red mullet in. This takes literally seconds to cook. Watch. A red mullet is nearly half cooked. You can see it there. It's just sealed on the bottom. Nothing more. But then watch. You take them out, nice and gently. Okay. Watch. The dressing's a mixture of anchovies, garlic, olive oil, white wine vinegar, and tarragon. Red mullet on. Red mullet on. A little bit of salad in there. Enough for three. And then drip. A little bit, nice and gently. Yeah. Pass me the vinaigrette down, please. Gently. Five, and watch. five covers, chef. Yeah, hey, I want it all nice. <laughs> now, make me fucking two more of them on your own. Yeah? Hey, chef. Nigel, careful there's not too much salt on there, yes? Yeah, What's in the dressing? Anchovies. What are yeah. they? They're yeah. salty. Be careful. Okay. Lawson, yeah. I think that fish is burnt, yeah? I can see it from here. Turn it over. Turn it. Turn it over quickly. Oh, my God. So do it again. There you go. Let me ask you a question. Would you eat it? No, I'll start Would again. Would you pay for it? No, I'll, pay. I'll do it again. The brigade have got to get it right, because I've told the diners, if they're not happy, they don't have to pay. They may be cooking, but it's my reputation on the line. My name's Nigel. I'm a good cook. I'm a big lover of Greek and Portuguese food. I think I'll be able to hack it in Gordon's kitchen. He's a big man with a big personality, but so am I. My name's Robert Jones. This is my signature dish, and it's an award-winning long boat of lamb. To accompany that, I use an onion and garlic potato gratin and some roasted Mediterranean vegetables. My name's Kevin. The largest number of people I've cooked for is probably about 10 people in one sitting. So to go into Gordon's kitchen and cook for 50 is going to be a big challenge. My name's Lawson. My dish is a roast beef dinner, a nice thick gravy over the top with a nice big Yorkshire pudding. We believe Gordon Ramsay is one of the best chefs in the country. We know that we're the best butchers in the country. We're entering into that kitchen to be the best of the series. That's our aim. Lawson, yes. you're doing me three salad of red mullet. You've got four bits in there. Three twos are what? Six. You've okay. got four in there. Can I do your four for now? Sorry. No. So you want me to serve two at the yeah. table and leave one on their own? Oh. Come on. Fucking hell, guys. Hey, listen, listen. You're just rushing. Calm down. You're, you're OK. You can do this. Jesus just calm Christ down. almighty. Take it completely off the edge. You've got enough time. Service, to please. Down. Think about what you're doing, concentrate, one table each, yes? Robert, yeah. it's not a racer, it's about perfection, okay? okay? This is not a fucking bang it out, okay, and hope for the best. Now we put the food up. Are you happy with that? Yeah. You are, yes? You are, yes? Come on, another one. Yes, I am, yes. Good, so you should be. Okay. Fuck off. <laughs> Kathy Burke, please, yes? <laughs> no, Nigel, who spilled that? Hold on, stop, stop, stop. What's going on? The uh, fat's going on. Oh, come on. Come fucking on, guys. Hell. You're going to send us all on fucking fire. Watch out. Watch out. Take the oil off the stove quickly. Oh, fuck me. What are you doing? Lawson, just for five minutes, go and pick some fucking strawberries. Go out the back and fucking pick some strawberries. I think Gordon is right. I did panic. I was trying to do everything too quickly, too fast. I'll have to calm down and do things slower. Three minutes, Chef. Look at that. I'm gonna kill the first, yeah, but the first ones are immaculate, okay. yeah? And that's, per that's perhaps the worst fucking shit you've cooked so far in here. Robert, you can't be happy with that. I thought it would have cleaned for us. You chef. can't be happy with that, yeah. honestly. No, Chef. Because you know what? The last three tables have been perfect. That shit. OK, Chef. No and problem. then what do you think of me if I let you send that? You're going to okay. think I'm a right fucking arsehole. It's an hour and a half since the diner sat down. And the last starters are only just going out. It smells been getting me going 
going anyway, to be honest. And what I really want to do is just pick it up and shove it in my mouth. <laughs> but I've got a little bit of decorum, so I won't do that. It's a really sort of succulent, light, I mean, a, light, a nice light flaky fish, and it was cooked just right. Gentlemen, good evening. How are you? Very well, thank you. Good. Um, what's a matter with your starter? A bit bland. A bit bland, damn. Yeah. Red mullet is very delicate, so it's a very subtle flavour, slightly sweet, and a nice crispy skin. You're clearly not paying for that, are you? No. I'll make sure you pay for your main course, okay. trust me. <laughs> <laughs> no? I don't think so, I don't think so. Hello, hello. Oh, hello, darling. You all right? Mm, nice to see you. Very um, nice to see good you. Good to see you. Now, I can't believe you're a fucking vegetarian. That's not true, is it? Well, no, I'm not a vegetarian, because I eat fish. OK, so not... But I don't eat meat. Right. I haven't eaten meat for 24 years. Any chance of having a little conversion later? No. Would you never eat meat again? No, I have tried, yeah. but I don't think my stomach can handle it anymore. Would you like to sneak with me behind the scenes and have a nice, lovely pink steak? The most amazing sirloin. I'll get round the back and chump on some meat with you, Gordon. Yeah. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> For you, special, I'm going to do the most amazing risotto, but don't tell the other fuckers, they'll all want it, OK? Special treatment. Very nice. Good to see you, my darling. I don't see you like later. Huh? You don't like risotto? Not really. Oh, for fuck's <laughs> sake. <laughs> Because when you're a veggie, uh, that's all you get given is risotto at people's yep. houses for dinner and... Yeah. Huh? <laughs> no, but I will no. try it, because you're cooking it. If you're unsure about the risotto, yes. No, no, no. No, 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 no. I've got an, an amazing thing to tell you, wild mushrooms. I want oh. you to be happy. Yeah, what I'd would like... you prefer? I would prefer the tanglitelli with wild mushrooms. Tanglitelli with wild mushrooms, yeah. yes. Yeah. Thank you yes. so much. Oh, just... um, mm. okay. thank you. Be back. See you later. <laughs> Jean-Baptiste. How many customers are paying for the starter? 34. 34 are paying? 16 are not paying for the starter, 34 are paying for the starter. Why not for the other 16? The main reason is bland. Bland? Yeah. The fact they had to wait fucking 90 minutes couldn't have yeah. helped, you know that? It spoils the taste. But I mean, you go to a restaurant and you sat there an hour later, you haven't got your fucking starter, it spoils the taste, like you said. There may be 16 customers out there refusing to pay for the fucking starter, but I want 50 customers wanting to pay for their lamb. So, Lawson, yeah? Yes. Get a grip, because right now, it's me plus four butchers that are starting to look a little bit fucking silly. Concentrate and don't send it unless we're fucking happy. We're already pissed off 16 customers. Bring it back. Next on the menu, a succulent stuffed saddle of lamb. Angela Griffin gets hot in the kitchen in the recipe challenge. I think you were up last night practising till fucking midnight. I was practising something, but it certainly wasn't cooking. <laughs> And will the butchers finally crack? Gentlemen, we've only yes, served sir. five tables, so get a grip, oh, wakey chef. wakey, and Lawson, make some ground up. Do something for me, That's yes? Chef. Welcome back to the F Word. Now, in a few weeks' time, I'm going to be cooking roast pork, and I've started preparing the ingredients already. Before I do anything radical, I'm travelling to the River Cottage in Dorset to talk to Hugh Foley Whittingstall about growing my own special ingredient to be served in the F-Word restaurant. Pork. Hello, girls. Come on. Are they all female, these ones? Actually, two girls and a boy. Two girls and a boy. Have you so named being them? Polite. No, I no. haven't named these. I don't name the piglets who aren't going to be around for uh -huh. too long. God, they run to you. Oh, huh? yeah. Well, they want their breakfast. God. What sort of pigs are you thinking of getting? I mean, I, I'm a big fan of these saddlebacks, but yeah. and that's a popular local breed, but... Um, yeah. We're looking at a rare breed. Yeah, so good. It's, sort it's of essential a... to keep these rare breeds alive. Yeah. Some near neighbours of mine had some barkshires, right. and they had kids, they were good pigs, and they worked very well for uh -huh. them. Barkshires are so, nice pigs. Yeah? Yeah. It's going to be a completely different fascination for the kids, because this time round, they're... Not going to be as cuddly and as friendly with them, I don't think. However... Well, I think you'll find they will get quite attached to them. Do you think so? Well, they're charming animals, pigs. Really? You, you don't want to underestimate the, the dangers of getting attached. <laughs> it's going to happen to you, Gordon. You might think I'm gone nuts, but it's going to happen to you. Yeah, absolutely. I also want to see how Hugh makes the most out of cooking every last bit of the pig. <laughs> this really is nose-to-tail eating. Right from the back trotter here and the tip of this tail to the end of the nose. We, we use pretty much everything. Everything. Yeah. Yep. And, and that's the excitement of it. I mean, yep. it's so versatile. Oh, that's beautiful. Isn't that nice? Uh, and that, that is just a world away from commercial pork. Yeah. The colour, the yep. texture, yep. everything. And that would be the same on the Berkshire's? Oh, absolutely. 
I thought the ears, we might make th these your special treat today. Ready? Yeah. Your first job might be to get the earwax out of the pizza. Well, but isn't it best just to clean his ears as he goes along? <laughs> <laughs> God, I have to say, this is a first, you know that? So we're going to singe the hairs off now? Yeah, this is the best tool so. for the job. <laughs> With the ingredients prepared, Hugh shows me his recipe for Chinese-style pig trotters and crispy pig's ears. <laughs> OK. Just lift that off. This is where the ears get a bit of an outing on their own. The special treatment, uh -huh. just, just to celebrate, if you like, their rather peculiar but delightful texture. Do you cut them up or do you leave them off? Yeah, I'm going to cut them into little strips now. Right. Like... Brush them in a bit of mustard. Uh -huh. And then press them nicely into the breadcrumbs. <laughs> The extremities. Well, thank you. My goodness. It's all from the head, the head and the trotters. Amazing how nice and crisp they are. Mmm. That is lovely. You think it's going to be a problem sending the pigs to the slaughter? For your kids, who knows? They could get very attached to the pigs. Mm. Never stop talking about the food mm -hmm. that you're going to get from them. From day one. From day one. Make sure you get as much of that garden for your pigs as you can negotiate with your dear wife. Getting on for half of it. Half the garden? Certainly a third. The more space they've got, the happier they'll be, and you'll have the best possible pork at the yeah. end of it all. But half the garden, you. Christ, I mean, Tyler thinks it's going to be a little small pen. Your garden will be liquid mud. Will you do me a favour? <laughs> Call Tyler. Yeah, sure. <laughs> We've got to pull this back now, guys, yes? yes, 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 yes I want yes, 50 yes. customers all agreeing to pay for their main course. Then we end on a high with a dessert. Robert, you team up with Lawson over there now. Nigel, you team up with Kevin and work as a team. Now, tonight's main course is a beautifully stuffed saddle lamb served with pom puree and caramelised red onions. Saddle lamb. This has to be one of my favourite cuts because, look, you've got a double whammy, you've got two nice eyes of meat and these beautiful little fillets inside. A very lean meat, absolutely delicious. Toasted cumin, salt, pepper, grind. And then just rub it into the lamb. Cumin is a really nice way of bringing out the sweetness of the lamb. And then just mop it up. Stuffing. <laughs> Apricots. That's it. Out. Pine nuts. Again, these pine nuts have been toasted, so we're just improving the flavour every time. Salt pepper. We're going to bind that together with a top of olive oil. And it's a really nice Moroccan feel. Fruity, fresh, fragrant stuff. It goes down in the centre. There. And the smell of those apricots and the toasted cumin is extraordinary. Get your fillets and run alongside the stuffing and just nice and tightly roll that over. Just look at that. Wrap Parma ham. You've got this really nice marbling of fat running all the way through there that just gives the saddle of lamb so much flavour. Lamb down, you lift that up, over, and roll. Pull it nice and tight. Like we're making an amazing big Swiss roll. Just twist the ends opposite each other, in and out, in and out. If it's rolled evenly, it's going to cook evenly. Chill one hour. Unwrap, tie. A loop around the outside of the lamb, loop it round, and then slide it over the lamb. Olive oil. Into the pan. Salt, pepper. And the flavour of that cumin now, I can actually smell it. It's absolutely amazing. Hot oven, 40 minutes. It's important to leave the lamb to rest, so it just starts to relax. Therefore, it becomes a lot more tender. Remove string, carve. First one through. One slice. And look, beautiful lamb. And it smells so sweet. Delicious. Lamb with apricot and cumin, done. Back cooking. OK, yeah. Robert, are we ready? With the lamb tonight, I'm serving sauté spinach with pine nuts, chilli and garlic, creamy mashed potato and caramelised red onions. This is a really nice thing to do with onions, and it just makes it sort of a lot more classier, caramelised, and it's a really nice way of having it as a proper vegetable. Yeah, yes? Right. Let's go. We find the hottest part of the stove. Right, taste, please. Taste. A little bit of salt. And just a touch more vinegar in there, yes? Robert, how long for that first table, please? Um, I'm ready with, with mash. I'm ready with caramelised onion. I've just got to do spinach. Right, a little bit of garlic. Half a spoon of chilli. Sweat that off. 
Nigel, are we ready to go with five? How long? Two minutes. Five, just... just five. No, no, come on, you've got to speed up now, Nigel. There's one table, we've got 12 behind, so... How long? Two minutes, Chef. Yeah, I mean, two minutes, quickly, yes? Yes, Chef. Let's go, then, yes? Five, right. Yeah. I want you to come back on this one now, you know that. I want you to shine through I'm this fucking main course. Spinach on, a little bit of seasoning, yes? Just wilt the spinach, yes? Toss the spinach, yes? See how quick just, it could... Just, 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 just lightly oil Lightly, it. yeah. I don't want it greasy, yeah? Yeah. OK? Five portions. Where are the onions? Good. Mashed potatoes. Come on! I'll show you the first one. Let's go. Get your fucking hands off my hands. Watch. Grub. Thank you. And just follow me. That's all. I'm not asking you to do anything difficult, Lawson. OK. But nice. just all I want you to do right now, big boy, yeah? Okay. It's yep. fucking wakey-wakey a little bit, yes? Watch. Don't sabotage it, okay? Okay then, Chef. Yeah. Right, straight to the edge knife. Watch. Stay with me. A little bit of seasoning on there. A little bit now, that's it. Good. Now watch. Come on, Lawson, for fuck's sake. Move down, you fucking donut. Huh? Where's your vinaigrette? Oh, come on, Lawson, fuck me. I'm here, I'm huh? here. You make a fucking snail look fast. Move your ass, come on. Right, Robert, watch. Now, on, and then just glaze. That's how I want it. That is beautiful. You're a butcher, it's nice and pink, yes? Yeah. One table down, 11 to go, and that's great. Now get a fucking move Thanks. on, yes? Go, okay. please. Thank go, you. table six. And Lawson, <laughs> Lawson, <laughs> you think I'm here as your fucking dusty pig? Okay, yeah. Yeah, no, bollocks, mate. Move your ass. All the flavours in the spinach were really good, and the stuffing was lovely. Uh, the creaminess of the mash, I just loved it. The tartness of the onions, I thought it was great. I'd love to, I'd love to criticise it, but I can't. It was perfect. My ideal dish. Yes. Potato. And you're scooping it, aren't you? Just watch, just watch. Where's the spinach? Where's the onions? Come on, guys! Already, Fuck it now. Let's go. Where's the spinach? What's all that burnt stuff in there? What did you burn? You burnt the chilli, all the black bits. Everything else is nicely done, but the chilli's all black and burns. OK, Chef. Yeah? Kevin, get some spinach on. Nigel, leave him to do that. You work on these plates. Come on. There's no point in cooking lamb perfectly, making the most amazing mashed potatoes, caramelised onions, and then we've got burnt spinach on there, Nigel. No, yeah? Chef, sorry. Start again. OK. Time to get more potato on, please. Hello. Um, how was the pasta? It was lovely. Yes. Very yes. nice. Now you're a serious foodie, yes? Yes. Well, I like to think. Well, I'm serious about food. Now everyone would assume you actually eat like way netter, but you're actually quite a fussy eater. You don't just scoff it down. You're quite no, no, no. articulate when it comes I'm to good food. I'm very healthy. The reason why I'm a big girl is because I drink beer. Because really? I love beer. Uh -huh. And what's your favourite beer? Stella. Stella. And do you get your beer goggles on? Do you get in there in a way that you? Really, seriously, Mate, can't stop. it's the only time I've ever had any sexual satisfaction, really, <laughs> is when I've got the beer goggles on. No, no, no. No, I mean, but <laughs> I don't too. drink as much as I used to, obviously. No. When I was younger, yeah. I could certainly drink the boys yeah. under the table. Now that <laughs> you've, you've made it quite fucking clear that you hate poncy food. Yeah. Now, in your mind, what's the difference between good, honest tasting food and poncy food? What, what, when does it become poncified? When there's about that much of it. And it all looks really pretty, right. but there's there's a little pile about that high, oh, and that's God. it. Fucking hell. Do you think my food's poncy? Well, this is my first taste of your yeah. food. when you finally came back in the fucking restaurant. When it finally arrived at the fucking table, yeah. mate. <laughs> but hold on, how many cigarettes do you smoke a day? Well, out there, waiting for me food, yes. about 20. Huh? Thanks, I'll go banned it. Normally about 10. What would make you give up? If I got pregnant, which isn't going to happen now. Why? Because I don't want to get pregnant. You can get pregnant at your age, you're not that old. I don't want to get I'll pregnant. I'll do anything to make sure you stop smoking, you know that. Are you going to impregnate me then? <laughs> I've got a low sperm count. <laughs> <laughs> After service, maybe, yeah, when all the customers have gone out. But what strikes me rather bizarre is that all that fucking smoking you do all day long, all the lager you do all day long, mm. that means, in my mind, you've got a fucking pallet like a cow's backside. So, I want to know how good your pallet is. Right. OK, I'm going to test it. You're going to kiss me? Uh, uh, not yet. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Put your teeth back in first, I'll give you a kiss after that. <laughs> Later. So, blindfold. This is quite a, uh, this yeah, is quite a this moment. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I've had this before. See, this is quite sexy. Ready? Right. Now, simple test, yes? Right. Very, very simple test, OK? What is it? Real or processed? Does it taste like it's been freshly cooked or does it taste like it's come out of a packet? OK. 
So, what is that? Got no taste whatsoever. Uh huh. So it's soft cheese, like a dairy lee or. Mm -hmm. Have a taste. Oh no. Go on. That's the fucking dairy lee. <laughs> And the other one was like one of your poncy cheeses. <laughs> That's got no taste. Absolutely right. The first one was a really nice slice of brie, and the second one was fucking Dairy Lee. Right. Right, here we go. You'll like this one. Give me your fingers. There you go. Have a taste. Is it proper food or is it processed food? Yeah, like a flat bit of breadcrumb fish or something. Mm -hmm. This one? You like fish? Yeah. Second one's a fish finger, isn't it? Which one do you prefer? <laughs> I suppose the second one. Cool, fucking hell. The first one was a really nice goujon of soul. Goujon and the second one. Goujon. Yeah. You know, the second one was a fucking filio fish from McDonald's. Oh, Kathy. really? And I hate fillet of fish. Fucking hell. I never eat fillet of fish at McDonald's. I can't it, bear it. Right, here we go. Swill it down with this. Which one of these do you prefer? Mmm. Oh. Steady. <laughs> cool, fucking hell. <laughs> Oh, Jesus God. <laughs> right. Here we go. Hey, you got to work tomorrow. Second one. <laughs> Numero uno. You like a little tipple, a special brew. Oh. <laughs> really? And what was the second one? It was a fucking quality lager, the second one. No, no. I a Czech lager. I preferred the special brew. And you like the fucking tramp's piss. Listen, mate, uh, I'm a cheap date. What can I'm I say? I'm fucking believing. Take that off now, babe. Huh? Uh, well... Dear, oh, dear. The special brew. That was the fucking worry. The tramp's piss. I know. And especially when you started knocking it back, it started worrying me. I haven't drank the special brew for years. Seriously. Um, I'm going to get back to the kitchen. All right, mate. Where's my pudding? Pudding's coming. Stop fucking smoking. Stay inside the restaurant and I'll get your pudding organised. All right, mate. Great to see you. Thank yeah. you. And stay off the tramp's piss. Yes? I know. I couldn't believe that Fuck special brew. I'm paying all that money for Stella. Just get special brew or tenants. That was without doubt the most succulent lamb I've ever had. I'm not going to have another one like that again, probably. When I cook lamb at home, it's OK for it to be a little bit pink in the middle, but this is rare. Look, there was blood coming out of it. It was completely underdone. I would have this again and again and again, and it's just giving me a whole insight how I've been doing my Sunday roast completely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, Gordon Ramsay, I salute you. <laughs> okay, John Baptiste, results of the main course. Yeah. Please. Okay, so people who were not happy with the main course, it's nine altogether. Nine so customers nine didn't want to pay for the main course. Nine customers for the main course, yeah. Main reason is um, undercooked and cold. So, a little bit too pink. Slightly too pink, Were yeah. they from ladies, the complaints, or were they from men? I uh, both, both. Half, Ready? Half of it, yeah. Which is a big difference from the starter, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah, let's finish on a high. Yes, yes. And you, yeah. you know, yeah. to be honest, the dessert is a summer pudding, so you can't really fuck that one. Yeah, okay. There's nothing we'll cooked. Okay. Let's go. Yes? Okay. Yeah? Next on the menu, a summer pudding with lime creme fraiche. I tried to get two fast food addicts to kick the junk. There's no food in there, it's all beer. There's some, huh? It's, it's three weeks there. old. Yeah. Just have a wee smell. Just have a wee smell. Yeah, be careful you don't get fucking bitten. <laughs> and Will Lawson pull it together. If you can do this all on your own, hey, big boy, tomorrow morning you're gonna wake up with the biggest hard on in fucking Birmingham. Let's go. <laughs> Welcome back to the F Word. Now, Angela Griffin's going to take me on to the first recipe challenge in the series. Can she cut it in my kitchen? Yes, I can. Most Move sense. your ass. Get in there, girl. Right, the rules are simple. The challenger picks their best dish, and I have to try and beat that with my version. There is one winner. Of course there's one winner. And the winner is... Well done, Get out. Kim and Aggie. Oh, get out. Oh, no, you're joking, aren't you? <laughs> So, lasagna. Lasagna. Where did you steal the recipe from? My fella, actually. Serious? Yeah. What's the secret a ingredient? Mixture of beef and lamb. Beef and lamb together? Yeah. Why? You just get a little bit of an extra taste in there. I like it in here. Yes? Yeah. This the first person yeah. ever said that. They're always complaining how hot it was. I like the heat. Do you? Yeah. 
Just sweating off my vegetables, putting in some of my pancetta as well. Yeah. Putting a bit of oregano now. So how did you get into cooking? Because you seem very relaxed and very natural in a special environment. Yeah, you just take me into it. Because like... I really like it. And who got you into it? My mum, mainly because. Not very good at it. Really? Yeah, and so I was kind of making my own food from when I was very, very young. What's the kitchen like at home? What's the kitchen like? Great. Although we're moving house. Oh, yeah? Yeah, we're moving house and I'm getting an arga. Oh, no. Do you it, hate argas? You're too fucking young to get an arga. No, I'm not. That I'm happens not. when the bus pass comes. Janet Street oh, Porter's got one. don't say that. Don't say that. Jesus Christ. Don't, because we're moving out to the country and I'm a bit like, are we giving up on life by moving out there? You're or... far too young for an arga. Do you think? Yes. I started sweating off my vegetables. Tomatoes, onions, carrots, pancetta, mushrooms and garlic. But I'm sweating them off in olive oil and then adding some red wine. Reducing the red wine so it really gives a nice coat and glaze on the vegetables. You enjoy food a lot, yes? Oh, God. I bet there's not a Sunday lunch that goes by that you don't have some form of roast or something on hey, there. Hey, I'm a mean Sunday roast cooker, I've got Serious. to say. Yeah. The most important meal of the week, would you not agree? What, Sunday? Sunday lunch. Yeah. Absolutely crucial. Do you sit down as a family? Yeah, and friends as well. We're God. very social. We like having our friends around a lot. Fantastic. That wrist action is extraordinary. My God, there's definitely going to be no lumps in there, is there? There really isn't, because I will cry if I have lumps in this. What's the secret ingredient? What do you oh, put in there? Oh, God, nothing. There must be something in there that's going to make... Oh, the love of my hand. Passion, that's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> the disciplined wrist. <laughs> and your ambidex as well, you're using both. I am. I've got to say, I'm finding that a little bit hard. I'm styling it out, aren't I? So I'm just going to let my mints cook out there now and just... Is that the, the right colour? Sorry? Is that the right colour? It is the right colour. What I'm going to do now is just put some basil in there. Ah, so you put your basil in at the end. I'm going to put the basil right at the end, so it doesn't go all sort of, you know... But I quite like color. that. Does the, does the taste not just um, soak in if you put it in earlier on? Um, or do you think it just uh, dies? You look fucking sexy when you're sweating, Thank you very much. Look at that. <laughs> Shit. Fucking hell. Are you putting yours together already? Yeah, of course I am. Oh, and hell. you're going about 900 uh, miles an hour. Yeah, no, I'm getting nowhere. Come on, don't overcomplicate everything. Just OK. I think you were up last night practising till fucking midnight. I was practising something, but it certainly wasn't cooking. Wait, get in there! Mince over and a really nice, generous dollop of creme fraiche in the mince. Mix that in in the last minute and it gives a really nice richness to the mince. How are you doing, Ange? Oh, I'm doing great. Yeah? Oh, I love cheese You're enjoying on the top this, of lasagnas. Do you know what I really am? Huh? I know I shouldn't be, but I really am. I can't believe yours is ready. Right. Got some of my cheese mix. I've got absolutely uh, loads. My darling, it's very kind, but that would be unfair because if I win, then I you've really provided half the recipe. I completely you've lost it. <laughs> it was all quite jokey before. It's getting a little bit serious now. I really hate having a. I'm going to tidy up now because I can't bear having a little tidy. God, you can't bear mess as well. Perfect woman you are. You know that. <laughs> huh? So, in she goes. Okay. Right, yours is in for 40, yes? Mine's going in for 20. Let's see what they look like and taste like when they come out of the oven, yes? OK. Confident? Oh, uh, absolutely, supremely. That's I'm more word. confident that you would make a fucking good chef, you know that. You're so passionate about food. I do love it, kid. I've set myself a challenge to get the nation cooking again. This week, I've come up with a curry that even the real life men behaving badly can do easily. Sunday for us is just basically a day of slothing. We order pizza, open a beer, and just veg out for the whole day. We basically haven't moved on from university. We're still eating extremely unhealthily. We live in a house with, you know, there's five of us, and we never eat together. Gordon and Dave's culinary skills leave an awful lot to be desired. Uh, all I ever seem to see them eating is takeaway foods, that sort of thing. I'm having to live with both of them, and nothing but pizzas and curries are just like a pain in the backside and I think it's about time that they moved on. If we don't make a change, I can imagine us uh, still sitting on these couches in 20 years, single, still eating garbage, but weighing like 30 stone and just having the worst life possible. Yeah. How you doing? Hi, Gordon. Hi, you. Hi. This is... I'm, I'm Dave. Nice Dave. to meet you, Gordon. Good to see you. I am Gordon. What in the fuck is that over there? This is toast and patty with curry-flavoured super noodles. So tell me about the noodles. What have you done to the...? You measure out half a pint of yeah. water and then you put the, the powdered sauce on top. What a pile of shit. I don't think I'd feed that to my pigs, you know that? I've been in some fucking scary households in my time, but I've never... <laughs> 
ever quite come across this. From a chef's point of view, um, yeah. let alone, you know, girlfriend, position, work, I mean, that you should not be eating. I swear to God. I mean, because that is just like fucking, huh? Where's the fridge? Oh my God. What is all that in there? Oh, fucking hell. Guys, there's no food in there, it's all beer. There's some ham. Huh? There's some. Good for sandwiches. Well, it was. It's, it's three other. weeks old. Yeah. Just have a wee smell. Just have a wee smell. Yeah, be careful you don't get fucking bitten. Oh, yeah, that's that's not great. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. that's high. These yogurts are now four and a half weeks out of date. A freezer packed full of pizzas. Yeah. Chicken nuggets. Yeah. When you come home at yeah. night, do you eat this stuff pissed? Yeah. When you just basically eat anything that's in the house when we're drunk, so yeah. we're just you're fucking disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Two disgusting pigs that are fucking hibernating in Clapham. <laughs> Gentlemen, the first thing I'm gonna do, yeah, before we touch anything else, is I want a good fucking clean up. <laughs> All the stuff is out of date, Gordon, in yeah. the bin, yeah. Good in bin it all. Yeah. Pot noodle. Pot noodle. I think you can say goodbye to that. It's on his last legs, yeah, the Mexican chili. It's like an old friend. An old friend, yeah, get rid of it. <laughs> This little array of takeaway menus, you can fuck without them, okay? Because they're going in there <laughs> and they're staying in there, yeah? Yeah? Okay. This is the good day. Now we've cleared out the crap, I want to buy some proper food that still appeals to the guys. So, this is a local parade of shops, right? Yeah. You know, this is one of our favourites. This is one of our favourite. Yeah. 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 favourites. Yeah. It's very village. So, when was the last time you were here? Hello. Hi, guys. What's the first thing Hi. you smell in here? What do you smell? Um, spaces. Something that can't go off. So we'll think of things like turmeric, or mustard seeds, and fennel seeds. Lovely spices right. you've got. Oh, oh, you How are you doing? Oh, yeah. he, does my Hi, yeah. he does my kebabs. He does your kebabs? Yeah. <laughs> you serve him kebabs? These people always come for the kebabs. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes, three times, four times a week. <laughs> that's, a, that's a slight over a giant. That's an over Four there, times actually. a week, on top of the pizzas, the takeaway curries. Fuck me, we've got some work to do. Yeah, no. <laughs> Right, we we'll do something simple. Cool. Something that won't stress you out, and something can be done quicker than ordering a takeaway. A very straightforward, easy Malaysian curry. We're going to make a curry paste. Right. Okay. The most exciting thing about this paste is that you can make it the start of the week. Yeah. Use a bit of it and just keep it in the fridge. It's there. Yeah. Ready, like butter. Okay, Dave. I want you to peel the ginger. Gordon, I want you to cut the chilies in half. Garlic, lemongrass, and shallots. What we're going to do with these ingredients, we're not going to chop them all, we're just going to blend them into a paste. Bung everything in a blender, add turmeric and blitz. Then add a drizzle of ground oil and blitz again. Give it a little shake. And that's your paste. Okay. Put a little smell of that in there. Oh, wow. Well. Yeah. Get it all nice and hot. Yeah. And wash. A little bit in there and start cooking that out. OK. Now, once we start cooking off this paste, yep. then we're going to slice the onions, put the onions in. OK. Just look at the colour of that now. No. That's the little magic ingredient in there. Now, this is what it should be like at the weekend, you guys cook. You know that? Yeah? Yeah. How does it feel to be cooking? I'm actually feels good. really enjoying it. Really yeah. superb. How are they doing, those onions? Sweating down yep. nicely. Sweating down nicely, yep. See the way it's all starting to break down? Yeah. That's ready now for the chicken. So, don't worry about burning your little fingers. All right. Yeah, on there like that, look. Down. OK, and start sweating the chicken down. So you decide to keep them on the bone garden rather than yep. keep them off? The reason why I'm going to keep them on the bone, OK, is as it's cooking, I don't want the chicken drying out. Coconut milk in, please. OK. Take your time. Good work. Then add a tin of coconut milk, followed by some stock, spices yep. and soy sauce. Now, one thing I haven't seen in here is anything sort of slightly healthy. So the yes. curry is going to be finished with some green beans. All right, okay. OK. We're going to finish it with green beans, but hey, you can finish it with spinach, you can put broccoli in there, you can put cauliflower in there, you can put potatoes in there at the end, but you've got to start eating a little bit fucking healthier. Yeah. Uh, how could you compare that in your fridge? Standing next to that fucking roll of furry, sticky, stinky fucking ham. <laughs> I, no. I'm embarrassed about that. I'd yeah, be fucking I, embarrassed. I was embarrassed at the beginning about that. This has made me even more no, no. embarrassed. Yeah, 
last thing. Oh, How's it going? Here we go. Look at that. Oh, awesome. That smells wow. amazing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's not a number 59. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell I'm living we'll with it. We'll go for a beer. Pretty mm. good? Mm. Mm. That's the healthiest yeah. food you've eaten in what? Quite delicious. Oh, decades. For me, the most important message yeah, is for you guys to keep it up. Because yeah. you slip back into your old ways. No, yeah. not, sure. not at all. Yeah? And you're going to have a fucking pot belly bigger than my fucking pig in the back. <laughs> <laughs> it's so nice to see you around the table. Cheers, yeah? Cheers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, guys, Thank can you, you do me a favour? And stay around the table. Yeah. Yeah? Cheers, guys. And, and stay off the fucking telephone ordering <laughs> shit. Yeah. 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 Guys, cheers. 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 Seriously, guys, let's do this more often. Stay. Okay, Jean Baptiste, tickets, please. Wait. Five summer pudding away, please. Let's yes, go. Chef. Okay, thank you, Chef. This is a very classic, okay, summer dessert, yeah. Yeah. Rather than that stodgy white, fucking horrible, anemic bread, we've got a really nice, tasty brioche, okay? Right, Nigel, just explain to me. Yeah, I work and talk at the same time. Tell me what you're doing, quick. Right, we've um, dipped the brioche into yep. a black currant coolie. Good. We then layer in it. Mm -hmm. Go with uh, fresh strawberries, yep. another brioche dipped it... in the coolie. Yeah, yeah. we're we'll layering it with black currants, blueberries, and then it'll be uh, served with a creme fraiche with a lime zest. Good, 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 good. Let's go. Hey, Lawson, if there's anyone, yeah, in this country tonight that could set fire to that, it would be you. Okay, know, stay off the fucking stove. Let's go. Five. Good. Off. Right, raspberry brown. Good. Raspberry brown, like I've done. And always hit the centre of the plate, yes? And then with a coolie, watch. Just on the top. One there. And then One a little round. bit. What? Just a little bit. But don't, 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 don't fuck the plates up. Yeah, nice and gentle. Watch. A little bit there. And round. I asked you to hit the middle of the fucking plate. Look what yours is. Pardon, sorry? Oh, come on. Sorry, I mean, I can't... Lawson, I can't keep on saying it. OK, in the middle. Come on, Kevin, let's go. I'm ready. You're ready? Yeah. Why are your plates always so dirty? Fucking hell. Robert, you get a hot spoon, and it's called a quenelle. Quenelle. Watch. So you get a hot spoon like that, and it just melts the cream. Don't get it too hot, otherwise it fucking slides off. Off. And then on. Yeah? No, no, fuck off, you do it yourself. Cool, dear. Service, please. The was great, it looked like it was going to be really fantastic, but it was just a bit too acidic. I actually thought that was really nice, really, really nice. That's the best out of the three, I think. This last table, OK, I want you to do from start to finish and fucking finish on a high for me. Three summer puddings way. Let's go, okay. big boy, yes? OK, then. Yeah? Yep. Good man. OK, fuck me. On. Good. Raspberries on. There. Get everyone looking like that. And we're going to end on a fucking high. It's Robert, off you go, yeah? Let's go. Make it work, Lawson. You owe this one to yourself. Let's go. Now, Lawson, if you can do this all on your own, hey, big boy, tomorrow morning you're going to wake up with the biggest hard on in fucking Birmingham. Let's go. <laughs> OK, good. Nice. Two seconds. Go. Yeah, that's fine. Don't worry, they've got an extra bonus. Go. Yes. Service, please. Go. Table seven, yeah? Quickly. Uh, Lawson, they look fucking beautiful so far, so don't fuck it up, please, yes? Lawson, can you hear me in there? Yeah, I can look yeah? Gordon, yeah. Is there anything in there between those ears? Come on. Yeah, yeah. Service, please. OK, good. You, nice. You, well done. Start clearing down. Ooh, hey, fuck me. Hey, well done, big boy. You pulled that back there at the end, yes? Yeah. Yeah? I, I feel like I let my team down when I first Don't started. Don't worry about that. We got there in the end. You hit me that. in the face. Yeah, all fuck me. I'm yeah. going to stay at it. Yeah. I'm going to keep working at it. Yeah. I'm not going to bottle out. That last table was fantastic, yeah? Yeah, yeah clear down. Well done. Thank Up. you. Good boy. All right. Cheers. Next on the menu is judgment time in the recipe challenge. Very, very close. Very close? Yeah. But um, the winner for today is... Yes. The brigade finds out what yeah. the diners really thought of their food. They're taking the piss. Some people moan about absolutely fucking anything. You know that. And it's time to christen the pigs. I want you to start thinking about some names. Bangers Either way, OK? Bash, Daddy, that's it. Bangers I think bash. Trini and Susanna. Hey. Yeah, one's got a fat ass, one's got small nipples. <laughs> Go back to the F word. Now she's calm and confident, but will the blind tasters prefer her dish over mine? Well. Ready? <laughs> Come on, then, kid. Get in there. <laughs> huh? Hello. How are you? Hello. 
Okay, so we're going to start with uh, the red dish. Okay. Quite strong, strong flavour. Strong flavour. Strong mushrooms. Yeah. Oh, mushrooms are nice. The mushrooms are very, very nice. Mm. I probably could eat about half, half of this. Half a portion. Yeah. Half a portion, because mm. I think very, otherwise very it's just too rich. Pasta's a bit curled up the edges. Quite light. Carrot. Nice, yeah. Nice. The meat and the vegetables are no, it's really, really nice. Lovely. I think it's quite hard. Do you? Mm. Yeah. And first of the series, of course, for me, is the most important. I like to get off to a good start. OK. Ali. Right. Very right. close. Once again, very, very close. Very close? Yeah. But um, the winner for today is... Yes. Welcome. Well done. No, no really? No. <laughs> <laughs> they find yours too rich. Too rich? Yeah. No, don't look so fucking smart. No, yeah, you maybe have a job tomorrow. Come on. Hey, yeah? come on. Come oh. on. You can <laughs> cut it in the kitchen. Will you do me a favour? Yeah. Fuck off out of here now. <laughs> yes? Thank you, my darling. Thank you. Cold dear. Wait, Jesus that. Christ. <laughs> Time for a bit of sanity. Here are the pigs. Come on, guys. Quick, let's go. Quick one. Uh, Jack, um, uh, Jack, come here, quick. Holly. What are we getting? Pigs. Right. How much space do you think they need? Two. Lots of space. Lots of space. Little pig. Is that enough room? You're the little pig. Yeah. Legally, a pig pen needs to be no smaller than the length of the pig. But I'm following Hugh's advice and giving them a whopping 70 square metres. The area for the pigs. Is that enough space for the pigs? Yeah. Now, listen, you know they're going to be sleeping out here, OK? And they're going to be getting nice and fat. OK, and once they get nice and fat, guess what we're going to do to them? Eat them? Yeah, we're going to have the most amazing bacon sandwich. Ready? Right? Stop there, Jack. Oh, Look how much room they've got. So I can see Tana's face thinking, this is my, this, this is my garden. It was looking very pretty and very lovely, um, but Gordon's very persuasive. The only way to get this into the ground is actually think it's anti-war Thompson's head. <laughs> The pig pen is nearly ready, so we're off to see top Berkshire breeders, Christine and Kevin, to bring home the bacon. Look at that. They are beautiful. These are rare, unique, and the flavour of these things are extraordinary. Oh, these are fantastic pork pigs. Uh, Do you want to yeah. see some little ones? I'd love to yeah. see some little ones. Come yes. on, then, let's see some little ones. Can we bring them in? <laughs> oh. Leo, quick. Oh, look at this. There you go. Wow, it's two days old, Lily. Megan, you're attached to that one already, aren't you? Dear, oh dear. No. Oh dear. Hello. Oh, hello. Now you are a very luscious baking sandwich now. Oh. Look at you. Yes. Look at them. They're, they're beautiful. They're very cute, aren't they? No. The Berkshire pig would be a good choice of pig for Gordon because it is that little bit smaller, but the Berkshire is a particularly friendly pig and you can feel safe to have it around children. We won't be taking these little piggies home. They need to stay with their mother until they're eight weeks old. Now we have to decide which two we're going to have. I want to serve pork as the final meal of the series. So working backwards from the optimum slaughtering age, Christine has recommended two 12-week-old girls. Now, you need to think about when you want to send these pigs off to the butcher. You don't want an overfat pig. No. No, no, no. But you need the nice, rounded bottoms. Yes. This one here, the, you know, two, two... Yeah, that's a nice, so that good thing. Do you think? Yeah. That one and that one, yes, shall we? Yeah. Should we put them in the back? Oh, oh, yeah, right. Tony, I'll get the... Um, where's the board? Watch out, guys. Let's go, guys. Hello. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Yay. It has to be the perfect way, from a chef's point of view, to start with a raw ingredient, nurse it, wow, then eat it. You can't get any better than that. I, I want like you to start thinking about some names. Bangers either way, and okay? mash, Daddy, that's it, bangers I and think mash. Trini and Susanna. Hey. Yeah, one's got a fat ass and one's got small nipples. OK, Gordon, miss you. Yeah, two seconds, Nigel, let's go. OK. OK, the results for the desserts are 13 people refuse to pay for the desserts. 13. 13, yeah. What they said is too acidic. Too acidic? Yeah, and what? over juicy. Over juicy? Fucking hell. Uh, they're taking a piss. Some people moan about absolutely fucking anything, yeah. 16 diners refused to pay for their starters, 9 refused to pay for their main, and 13 didn't pay for the pudding. So, of the 150 plates of food served, only 112 were paid for. It started off slightly shaky. And for a bunch of amateurs to come into this kitchen tonight and then pull it back through the main, hats off. And Nigella, Thank you. promise me you'll stick to butchery. Yeah, yeah? I will, yeah. 
<laughs> don't get a restaurant. <laughs> okay, thanks. Fucking good to see you smile. You know, yeah. Because I'll yeah. tell you what, for a small guy, you've got a big pair of bollocks. <laughs> On next week's show, there's a new amateur brigade in the kitchen. Why are you so fucking chippy? I'm not chippy, mate. Right, Gordon. Gordon. James, it'd be greatly appreciated for the next 20 minutes. Gordon. Gordon. I'm not your fucking mate. Okay, Gordon. And I get some expert help to judge celebrity chef's recipes. Right, Ainsley, get your big fucking chops in there.